Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a super chunky blanket using Bernat Blanket Big. This yarn is massive. It's so thick you can tell just by looking at it on my hand and it is a jumbo number seven. So I'm using the color vintage and I'm going to be using this 30 mil crochet hook from Furls Crochet to crochet this blanket. I will have a link in the description box for the hooks and where you can purchase them and also links for the yarn. Now because this yarn is so big it is going to seem weird crocheting with it. You may need to work out your chain a couple times. You want to try to get it the stitches even like your chains looking about the same. Get in a good rhythm for working that chain and if it doesn't look good you may need to redo it a few times. So I'm going to chain out a total of 37. Okay and it is like I say takes a little bit getting the hang of working with this big hook and you want those chains as much each of them the same as possible so work out that you have a total of 37. okay so once you have your 37 chains and you're happy with the way it looks we're going to work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook so one two three four Just gonna get this my hook a little tighter. We're gonna yarn over one, two, three. So yarn over and go through fourth chain, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. So we're going to continue working double crochets along our chain. We're making these super big stitches and it does take a little getting used to working with such a large hook but it's going to make such a nice big cozy blanket when we're done. And if you're really not happy, just keep pulling it out and trying again. The blanket's going to work up so fast because we're using such a big hook and such big yarn that if you have to pull it out and redo it a few times, it's worth it. Okay, I've worked all the way across. I have a total of 34 stitches. We're going to chain one in turn. And now we'll be working slip stitches in the back loop only. So here's our two loops. I'm gonna go through the back loop only. I'm gonna pull up a loop, and then you're gonna pull it through the loop on your hook. So go through the back loop. We're gonna pull up a loop, and then pull it through. Through the back loop only, pull up a loop, and then pull through. Just take your time.
Make sure you give it a tug up before you pull it through because you don't want that slip stitch too tight. Okay, and continue like this across. Okay, so I've worked across 34 and in the turning chain, there's 35. Okay, so now we'll chain one. We'll yarn over and find the back loop. Okay, so you're gonna see sort of a stitch here. Come to the back, we're gonna go through that back loop. Pull through two, pull through two. Yarn over. Okay, there's the back loop again. You're gonna see it's gonna look like a nice beautiful stitch in between the double crochet rows. So we're just gonna continue now working our double crochets across in the back loops only. So to join the yarn, I'm just going to knot it. Okay, so here's how nice it's looking. So I've worked across and we're gonna go back now and repeat row two. So we'll be repeating row two and three now for the pattern. Can't remember now if I've chained one. Okay, so we're chaining one, turning, and then we're going to slip stitch through that back loop, just like we did for row two. Pull it up and then through, through the back loop, yarn over, whoops, nope, and pull through. I almost did a single crochet. So pull up a loop and then pull the loop through. Okay, you wanna make sure you give it a tug as well if it's pulling, but if you keep your slip stitch loose, it should work out well. So I'm gonna continue working now my rows off camera and then I'll meet you back up. Okay, so I've been working away on my blanket and I'm coming to the end. So this is my 10th row of double crochet. I've had a total of nine rows of my slip stitch. So in total, I have 19 rows and I'm just working on finishing up. I've used a total of seven balls for this size. So mine is measuring 42 by 52, but I do have three sizes included in the pattern. So I have a smaller throw size, which will be 32 by 42, and then also a larger 52 by 62. So all that's included in the pattern. In 
and I'm using almost exactly seven balls for this. I'm just gonna redo that stitch. Okay, so you'll see here, I don't have too much left. You wanna make sure your gauge is on track so that you end up using exactly the seven balls like me. Now you can, it does work up really quick. So if you have to play around to make sure that you can make the blanket with the right amount of yarn, you can go ahead and do that. Now for weaving the tail, all you need to do is use your fingers. So I'm just gonna cut this off, fasten off. And you can just take the yarn and you're gonna just use your fingers to weave it. Find little loops here just to pull it through. So really just the same way you would be doing it if you had a needle, but you're just gonna use your fingers instead. And we'll continue just weaving through. And then once you've gone enough in one way, we can go back in the opposite direction to secure this tail. Now I was really excited to make this blanket just as a throw to lay my grandchild on that's coming here soon. Nice, cozy, soft blanket to lay her down on for photos. I thought this would be perfect. But now since making it, my children are already fighting over who gets it. And I'm, I said, I actually made it more so for the baby to lay on, but they all want one now. So you'll be amazed at how soft and cozy this is. It really is a favorite. Perfect for your family room or the end of your bed. And it would make a great gift for a baby too, just as a similar, um, you could lay them down like a little play mat, lay them on it for photos. And you can bake the smaller one if you wanted, but I wanted this one to be big enough that it was a nice, Nice throw size for the couch or the chair. Okay, so you're just going like this. So I've just about hidden my tail. And don't this, do this until you're sure that you're happy with the size of your blanket and that you're not gonna wanna take it apart because that will be a challenge to get that undone Okay, and then I'm just gonna trim that. Okay, so we're left with this beautiful edge here. This is sort of how the edge on the side of the blanket looks, which is really nice as well. You don't need to finish this blanket with any sort of border or edging. It looks great just as it is. So as you can see, the blanket is meant, it's worked from the side across. So we have our beautiful stitch pattern going in this vertical this vertical way, nice big chunky stitches. And I think it turned out really nice and cozy. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much guys. Have an awesome day.